Hello again. Today's example is to do a load shear moment diagram, but this time with a slightly more uh, complicated beam layout. I've got a beam here that's, that's pinned on both ends, that is it's free to rotate at both ends. But rather than just strictly a force, I've got a force acting at a distance. So this is going to create a moment at this point. Now, it's not a whole lot harder than what we've done before, but you do need to take into account this little L bracket there. I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a free body diagram. And I've got this set up so that the, the beam is divided into basically three parts that are each one meter wide, and that L bracket right there is half a meter wide. There's a thousand newtons coming down there and a thousand newtons down at the end of the L bracket. And again, the, uh, I'm going to call this A and B, those, those pin joints there. So, to draw the, the uh, free body diagram, let's do it this way. Okay, there's just the beam. Now, the pins here at the end are going to generate a vertical force. So, I'm going to call that FA and that FB. Don't know what they are yet? We're going to find that out. This force down is easy, that's a thousand newtons. Now, right here, this, mo this force acting at a distance is going to be awkward to deal with. A cleaner way to do this is to have, is to move that force over here. Okay. But by moving that force, we've also got to take into account that we've moved it and add a moment in. And so the moment is going to go like that, and that's going to be 500 Newton meters. Okay? Now, in order to do this, I have to define a positive sign convention. So my sign convention is going to be this. Okay, I'm always going to assume that's positive. Now that's going to work until we get to the moment part of the load shear moment diagram. And then we're going to have to make a slight change, but we'll get there. So the first thing we need to know is what FA and FB are. We can't draw the load shear moment diagram until we're sure of that. So if I write the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero, I'm going to get FA minus 1,000 newtons there, and I'm just working from left to right, minus another 1,000 newtons there, plus FB equals zero. Well, I've got two things I don't know. I don't know what FA is, and I don't know what FB is, and I've only got one equation, so clearly I need one more equation. How about if we sum the moments about some point? If I sum the moments about A, only FB will, will be unknown. So I'll have one equation and one unknown, and then I can substitute into here. All right, so if I write, I'll get my head out of your way here in a second. If I write that, sum of the moments about A equals zero. Let's take into account this one first. So this is now, this is trying to go clockwise. My positive sign convention is counterclockwise. So this is going to be a negative moment, as is this, as is this. This one will be positive. Okay. So minus 1,000 newton meters for that one, minus another 1,000 newtons times 2 meters for that force right there. And this is just a pure moment, so I just add that in. In this case, it's negative. And then plus 3 meters times FB, and that all equals zero. All right? I'm running short on time here. I'm worried about running short on time, so I'm just going to write this out. FA equals 833.33 newtons, and FB equals 1166.7 newton meters. Now I'm writing these to five significant figures, okay? So, all we got to do now is write out, is draw our load shear moment diagram. So I'm going to write my answers up here, and that's going to be 1166.7 newtons. All right, make sure I got that right. I did. Okay, I'm going to erase this stuff here to make some room for myself. Okay, now, load shear moment diagram. 
we're going to need one, two, three, four lines. So there's one, two, three, four, and let's start with the loads, okay? Loads are easy. All we're doing is taking information from the initial drawing and transcribing it over to here. So, 833.33 newtons, 1,000 newtons, 1,000 newtons, 1166.7 newtons, and don't forget the moment. The moment has to be there. The beam knows it's there. 5,500 newton meters, so we're good to go. That's the load part. The shear part, okay, this is going to be in newtons, okay, is next. And we're going to work from left to right. We're going to go up where the load tells us to go up and down where it tells us to go down. So that's easy. So I'm going to go up. 833.33. Now I'm going to go down. A thousand. This tells me to go down. So when I do that, I'm going to go down a little bit below zero, and that works out to be. Let me double check here. Uh, minus one six six point six seven newtons. Okay. So just to, just so you know here what we're doing. And this last one tells us to go down another thousand to minus 1166.7. Again, I'm going to five significant digits here, okay? And that force brings us back to zero again. So, we're in good shape there. Last thing to do now is moment. And this is going to be in Newton meters. Get my magnet out of the way there. Right now, this is easy. We need to know the areas of these three boxes, and the that says the height times the width. Well, the width on all of them is one. You can tell I made this problem up to be simple. So we're going to go up. Now remember, the altitude here, or the height here, equals the slope there. The height here is constant, so the slope here must be constant. Right? And the area here equals the height there. Well, the area is 833.33 newtons times 1 meter in width, 833.33 newton meters. So that's easy. And that's in newton meters. Now, this is a negative area, so I'm going to subtract a little bit. Okay. That's minus 166.67 newtons times 1 meter. That takes me down to 666.67 newtons. Okay? And now, here's, here's the thing. I have this moment. Now, there are two coordinate systems acting here. There is this one, which we assumed in order to figure out the reaction forces, but there's also another one called the designer sign convention. The designer sign convention says that positive curvature is what happens when the top fibers of a beam are in compression. Negative curvature is when the top fibers of the beam are in tension. Let me grab my, my demonstration here. Okay, that's positive curvature, that's negative curvature. The designer sign convention works opposite to this. This is one of the few places I've ever seen where you'll get two sign conventions working in the same problem. Now, the, the, the dumb way to remember this, it's dumb, but trust me, you'll remember. That's positive. That's negative. Stupidest thing I'll ever write on the board? Bet you remember it. Okay, so I'm going to go up another 500 here because by the designer sign convention, that's positive. And that takes me to 1166.7 newton meters. That's a minus 1.66.7 newtons times 1 meter. Brings me back to zero, which is exactly where I need to be. Remember, 
pinned ends can't make a moment at the ends. So this is right. 